this is the Helljan turntable. The question is, how do we actually link this so we can control it by RTCC controller? In my case, uh, I have an ECOS controller, and I'll go through with you how I've actually set this up so that uh, it operates under DCC control. The Helgen turntable is actually supplied with a manual control a push button unit which uh, is very nice and allows you to move from track to track. This is simply achieved by pressing the go button which causes the track number to flash and then by selecting either the up or down red arrow you can select the particular track number that you wish to move to. So in this case if we wish to move to track number three, if I cycle around to track three appears in the display then press the go button again the track will then move round to track three as requested and once it reads that track it will then stop flashing The ECOS ESU command station provides a facility for programming a turntable. And if you go to the accessories programming button and select this symbol here and click onto the center of an empty page, it will come up and show you information regarding the Marklin 7686 turntable with its appropriate address. And by selecting this, get a very nice diagram of the various ways that you can program the turntable and control it. Unfortunately the Marklin 7286 is the only turntable provided for in this way and I could find no easy way of actually modifying this uh, for the turntable that I had purchased which was an Helgen 89121 motorized turntable. So I set about doing this in a slightly different way. So what follows is how I actually approached programming the ECOS control center for a Helgen 89121. I hope this is useful to you. So one of the things I wanted to achieve was to <coughs> connect this under DCC control to my ECOS controller. Uh, here you can see a track plan of my station area and one of the roads from the track plan leads off to the turntable it's, and if I select this point here it comes up with a diagram of the turntable and by selecting either the red or green points shown around the turntable I can automatically select the tracks in question and the turntable will turn on to that particular number or if I go back to the zero position here, you can see that the turntable actually comes back to the feed-in track from the main layout. So, back in the warmth of the office, how did I actually achieve this? First step is to select a clean page on your track plan, and then giving that a suitable name, so we call this turntable. The next stage is to actually draw out uh, the approximate shape of your turntable and the various tracks that lead into it. This is simply achieved by using the track symbols that are available, tracing out particular shape that you want to give to your turntable fairly easily achieves in the various options that you have for creating track. You can't trace a, 
a circle, but you can approximate to that uh, by uh, joining together the various shapes that, that approximates to the shape that you actually want your turntable to be. Um, so as you can see by just adding and adjusting the track components as I'm doing, um, we can move towards actually creating the turntable shape that uh, we're looking for. As you can see with a little bit of ingenuity you can actually form a circle. It's, um, it's close enough to a circle for the purposes. The rail markings that we're actually using are passive, so they serve no other purpose than actually indicating the shape of the track at this point. Once we've created the circle which represents the turntable, we can start adding the roads which represent our storage tracks and our leading track. To do this we add tracks in the approximate positions where we expect the tracks to actually lead in and out of the turntable. Again we're just using the normal track markers um, as a passive indication of where the tracks are going to enter and leave the turntable. And you can enter obviously as many roads as uh, your particular application requires. So how do we select the particular tracks on our turntable. We do this first of all by selecting the accessory programming key and bringing up a new page. We select, select the hammer. This then allows us to add new accessories uh, and by pressing the plus accessory button on the end of the line there uh, we're presented with a number of blank pages that we can actually use. By clicking on one of those we're taken into a create accessory page and in here we can actually create the accessory we need. The next step is to establish the addresses used by the Helljam turntable for DCC. These are contained in the manual that comes with the turntable. The turntable comes factory set with a base address of 57 with a number of offsets for the individual track positions as you program them. So if you refer to 57 in the table you can see that subsequent addresses 225, 226, 227 and so on will refer to the various tracks that you use as turnouts. You can modify the base address and there is a formula provided for doing this if it clashes with other addresses that you're using. I chose to stay with the 57 as the base address and use 225, 226, 227, etc. onwards. Now I'm going to simply call this by the address number. So the first address that I'm going to use is address 225 uh, for the first turnout. And I can do that by adding 225 and clicking. And then in the address box here, I'm going to add 225 as the actual address to match 225. And we then tick that, and then the address appears as so. And we want a suitable switch for that. And towards the end of this list, there are some two state switches which are ideal for this purpose. So I'm going to select one of those and that will be the panel symbol that will then appear. So we click that now and that gives us our first accessory address. We do our next one. This one is going to be 26 of the appropriate symbol. It's down the bottom of the page for two state switching and then accept that and we continue doing this until we've programmed all the tracks on our turntable. Having set up the addresses 
we can then revert back to our diagram of our turntable and attach the addresses to the individual tracks that we wish to operate. We do this by selecting this symbol and clicking on the position that we actually want it to appear as. We then select the particular address from our table and switch now appears on the diagram. And what we can do is just turn that round the right way up and we can go on and program our next switch in the same way by selecting the accessory button and bringing up the list of accessories that we've created. We continue doing this until all the roads on our turntable have been programmed in the same way. I hope you found this information useful. If you have any queries or further comments you'd like to make, please leave them below. In the meantime, I wish you a very happy Christmas.